How's it going YouTube? Come to today with another video. And today, guys, with the Brain Deal is going to be a siding guide. I'm going to talk about the cards you should side, the cards you shouldn't side, the cards that are pretty mid, and the cards that are very good. I hope this helps you out. We'll talk about general siding as well. So if you haven't already checked out my sponsors, definitely go ahead and do so all down below in the description at Imperium Duelist, Dragon Shield, Gem, Cloud, RW, Grimoire, and Chainlink. Without further ado, let's hop right into the video. The first one I'm going to be talking about is going to be blue tiers. I think this card is exceedingly mid, especially if you're playing something like Ubel. A lot of times there's just so many better things to be sending in Ubel. Um, I think that blue tiers is pretty cool and it definitely does a lot, but like it's kind of clunky. It takes up a couple spots in the side deck that I don't necessarily want to give up uh, because it's just better cards to be setting right now. And you'll see when we start talking about like the better cards, um, but D barrier deck Devi, these cards are really solid. Your opponent normal summons Ash, grabs the Poplar, reveals Poplar on the effect. You go ahead and hit it with Deck Devi. Pretty good. Shoutouts to Craig. Definitely brought that one up to me quite a few times. I think it's pretty solid. Um, overall, very cool tech card. It's in a lot of OCG lists right now, but it's, it's pretty mid. It's pretty mid. Perulia. Now, we'll see how you all feel about this, but I think this card is exceedingly mid. Um, especially if you're playing on something like Ubel. They can give you, like, a draw, but I've had people drop double Moltrummy on me, and I didn't let them draw a single time and put up a full board. So, like, if their hand's good enough, you're not getting a lot of value. Um, and again, this is definitely dependent, and if you're playing something like Tenpai, you're already going second, absolutely play this card. Go for it. You always get a trade for it, usually. If you play against Snake Eye, you're at least going to get one or two draws, at the very least. Um, it's pretty solid, but, you know, I had another conversation... Uh, with a different friend of mine named Craig, uh, where I agree wholeheartedly that, you know, sometimes, especially it's my own logic about things like Phantasme, if I'm siding this card in, this could have just been the card that I wanted to see, right? Like, if you wanted a droll in place of this card, then you should have just sided the droll and then saw the droll instead. Um, I think that this is just like, Kind of win more. Uh, there's a lot of times where, like, if you're doing some of the combos we're doing now and things like Ubel or Snake, um, there's a lot of times where this just won't matter. So, definitely interesting card. I don't think that it's going to be be-all, end-all. I don't think it's that good. Uh, but definitely let me know what you guys think. But I wouldn't be on the mad dash to try to find this card immediately at Nationals. Um, the Fiendsmith stuff, obviously, of course, go for it. But I don't really know if this card's going to be, like, it, right? The next thing is Super Poly. A lot of people ask me about this. Uh, if Super Poly is, like, worth it or not. I think it's really good if you're playing like the Cybers Attic Nester because you can out Opelousa and an IP because it takes a Link Monster and a Cybers. Uh, that's what we were doing before, and I still think it's pretty solid uh, for that reason alone. I'm siding at my current tier list, uh, but overall, if you're not playing something like tier that can just auto use this very easily, uh, I wouldn't try to force it. I don't think that it's like that good, and I don't think it's that impactful. You also can't super poly off like a Phantom because it can't be used as fusion material. Uh, which is just like real dumb because like that card shouldn't have like this play around innately it should uh someone said it in stream i think it was tf uh was that it should have just said that you can't use it as fusion material from grave and i definitely agree with that um but super probably pretty mid i probably wouldn't run this but if you want to the cyber static nister isn't bad uh cross out don't run cross out i think this card is so bad um, I think it's fine in the sense that, like, if you're trying to use it to hit engine, that's always the best way to use cross out. But, like, if they go track this and you cross out track this, like, that's kind of gross, right? Uh, but overall, I don't really find this card that good, especially right now. I think that, like, playing cards like this that aren't hand traps or a board break can definitely cause you to lose, especially if you're playing against something like Snake. Um, I just wouldn't want to be in a game one scenario and then have this be in my main deck. And let alone being in the side deck where I feel like if your opponent doesn't open the hand trap and then you open this, like, they better have Fiendsmith cards in their deck or else this card is just mega dead, right? Um, so I'm not a huge fan of this card. I haven't really been, unless it's a deck that can really use it, right? I uh, haven't really been a huge fan of it. Talking about Bell, uh, I had a conversation about this in stream actually a little bit earlier as well. Um, this card is pretty mid. Uh, you're going to see what I prefer over this card right now. Um, usually it's pretty solid, but like right now the uses of this are pretty low. Uh, you can use it against something like a Larry, but I'd rather use DD Crow, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, evenly, this card sucks, to be honest. Um, it's, like, okay, but, like, the amount of times where this card just doesn't matter, uh, I just don't think that it's, like, that crazy. You would need, like, evenly as something else. Because um, even, like, a lot of the decks right now with the Fiendsmith combos are ending on the Disarray. 
so like they can go ahead and just negate this anyway um so i don't know this card just doesn't hit enough at least in my opinion i don't think it's that good i don't think it trades well enough and i think there's other cards that get you a lot better trades in the formats right now uh lightning storm also pretty mid i prefer cosmic uh i didn't add cosmic on here i want to talk about it on the slide i think cosmic's also kind of mid but if i had to play one i'd play cosmic um, I don't really think that back removal is like that premium right now, but I do know that people are back on any spell and there is a way to get to it. So I think that the cosmic is definitely better. Um, but a lot of times the end boards are already pretty gross. So like it might not even matter to run it. You might just want to run more hand traps. I think this is a very rare time where like back row out just doesn't really matter. Now, Droll and the Rock. Are they good? We'll talk about that. Uh, nib, stop. Please stop dropping Nib when your opponent summons Sequentia. Stop dropping it there. Stop, stop, stop. Let your opponent use Sequentia, summon Lacry, and the Lacry summon Fiendsmith. Then drop Rock. Or a lot of times they'll go add Fiendsmith back, summon Lurie, drop Rock then. Because what's going to happen is they're going to summon Sequentia, you're going to nib, and then they're going to go Fiendsmith, shuffle back Sequentia, summon Fiendsmith, use the token and the Fiendsmith, and summon another Sequentia. Don't do it. Uh, it. It happens too much. I see it too much. Stop dropping rock right there. Wait until after they use the effect. Um, I think that Nibiru is fine. I think that we still see it at top tables at Nats because of the fact that it's just one of those cards that can carry you where like a lot of people don't expect to play against rock or they don't think it's very good it's when it's really good because people don't respect it and i've played against some pretty solid matches so far and like there is still players that will openly play into rock and be like you're not playing it um i think that it's also really bad i think it's also really good like rock is always this really polarizing card because either your opponent is just a savage and they play through it or play around it or they just like blindly do not care about it and then you rock them for their life savings so i would say like nib is kind of a coin flip into the matchup that you're playing because like either they'll respect it or they won't um so i don't really have a great opinion on nib right now i'm currently not running it i don't think it's very good um i'm running drill at two i think drill is one of those cards that's really solid and i think it's going to be the face of the format right now i think there's some hands in you bell that you absolutely do not care about a droll and you put up full board. There's other hands where you get drolled and you're staring at your hand like, wow, this sucks. Like, it's unfortunate. Um, so you really have to decide when you want the droll to come in. I'm maining two. Um, you can always main two side one. Um, that was the Dean Kong Femme ratio. Uh, shout outs to him. He's a savage with Sprite. Um, so I'm sure that he'll uh, bring that back as well. Uh, but back in his old sprite list where he was doing really well the deck, he always main two and sided one. Um, I definitely like that ratio a lot. Um, you're not really punished by having too many droll in your deck or breaking on it. Uh, but you also just have it. A two of is always going to be one of those things where you'll see it, but you won't break on it, right? I think that's really important. So I think if you're going to play droll, the max of probably main deck is like two. Um, you could play the third just to play it, but like I think two is plenty. Um, I think that it's really good, but like the only way for droll to be really impactful is you need like droll and right like you need droll and something else um talked about this earlier in stream too if you droll someone and they go closed heaven and then they just do that line then you need something for sequentia so definitely gonna be interesting but droll pretty good but you can kind of play through it pretty well when you have fiendsmith cards so kind of decide how you want to go about that dd crow is fantastic dd crow is fantastic i love this card so much dd crow is the card that plays around branded lost where bell cannot uh, another thing too is DD Crow on Lurie when your opponent tries to reborn it is kind of crazy. Um, being able to get rid of pieces early on or like your opponent's follow up when they try to bring back a Fiendsmith card to go in a combo and you get rid of that too, really good. Um, I like this card a lot. I think this answers a lot right now and I do think that it is worthwhile. Um, this is something I'm playing over Bishols. I don't really think Bishols are the answer right now, but they're fine. But I think DD Crow is better. By a long shot uh change of heart mind control i'm citing one change of heart and three mind control i think these are like the most stellar cards of the format you should be running these especially if there's fiendsmith cards in your deck you should be on as many of these as possible don't play snatch steal but play these um these are so good being able to steal one monster off your opponent's board and go full combo is crazy um another card that gets you another body is metaltronis 
I like that card a lot, but I so far in testing have not really found too many instances where it's like super crazy. Um, at least in my deck currently, but I still think that card is really worthwhile. Um, just something to note. Uh, but the steel cards are so important. I heavily recommend these. I think this is like a mandatory staple for a Vinyar side deck. You need these cards. Um, they just answer everything on the board. Uh, Droplet Dark Ruler. I think this is no surprise. These cards are really solid. Um, Droplet's only going to get full value if you send a trap because the Disarray can go ahead and negate this if they chain Chamber. Um, same with Dark Ruler. Uh, Disarray is pretty popular right now. We'll see if it stays popular. I really think that we're going to be in a format where, like, everyone's going to hype up Dark Ruler and everyone's going to be like, Dark Ruler, board breakers, they're going to be crazy. And then you know what happens? Nobody main Dark Ruler tops and everyone with hand traps tops because everyone's like, oh, I heard that uh, board breaker is going to be really good. So they all play a ton of board breakers and they lose to everyone with hand traps. It always happens. Everyone's on board breakers lose to the decks that have 15 hand traps because they can only do so much and their board breaker has to get set. So if they open up like multiple dark ruler or a dark ruler that they can't use and then they're like well that sucks it's different when you open up a hand trap and you can just sit on it and you can just wait um i i think that is definitely interesting uh, it happens a lot at big tournaments where like you hear an idea that's really crazy or like you'll be like oh nib's not being played like no one's playing that card so you just don't play it and you find out that like people are still playing nib it's the same thing um so i think this card is getting really hyped up right now so is disarray and I think my opinion, and this could be wrong, you guys can come back after the Nats, right, and be like, haha, you're wrong, or tell me I'm right, whatever. Um, this, I think, gets overhyped into the ground, and then people are aware of that, so they play hand traps. I think that's exactly what happens. But as of right now, these are pretty solid. But uh, we'll see if that changes. Rise to full height, you should be on this card at one on your side deck. Um, sending this off Beatrice, and then you just target your Rage... It's really nice because then you can just link off your rage. Usually the chain link is you go um, rage, target, monster, chain, rise to full height, target, rage, rise to full height, resolves, and then you resolve your rage. Your opponent can't attack anything. Um, same with like an IP. This card's really good. I highly recommend you play this card at one in your side deck. Again, it just helps you beat Tempai. Uh, Mistaken Arrest is the other great side choice right now. Uh, it just, until the end of your next turn, after the card resolves, neither player can add cards in your deck to their hand except by drawing them. Uh, I think this is really solid because there's just an immediate answer to something. Uh, if your opponent, like, activates one of the draw phase, right, you can just chain this. Um, always make sure if you have a card like this that you go draw phase anything, and your opponent goes no. This is where I'd almost wait till the standby phase, even though you can activate anything in the draw phase. Um, just try to get them out of draw, because usually they want to activate wanted, and if you ask anything in draw, a lot of times they'll assume that you have something. So I'll just be like, anything in draw. They'll say no, and I'll be like, standby. And they'll be like, I'm going to activate wanted in draw phase. And you're like, I'm a chain mistake and arrest. So that's one of those things where you really want to make sure um, that you're being very vocal uh, and really understanding uh, what phase you're in and try to bait things out where you can. Um, I think that it's really important uh, for certain siding patterns to really understand a what to side. So let's hop in my deck real fast and we'll talk about what that looks like. So this is the solo mode on DB. If you go to begin siding, you can actually just swap your cards out and then hit swap cards and it'll just move the cards in and out for you. Then post side, like if I'm going into game three, I'm just going to hit reset deck and put everything back to normal and then side from there. I think that everyone should be in the practice of this. Even at large events, I do it myself. So if you have like a bunch of cards sided in and then you're going to go into your next game, reset your deck completely and put your side back together in order and then go from there. Because this will help you just not miss things that shouldn't be in your deck still. Um, I think that's really important though. Um, talking about siding though, if I'm going first, I always want to make sure that I have a good siding plan. Um, so I'm going to be putting in Judgments and my Annie spell. I'd be putting this in if I'm going against Tenpai, but I'm not going against Tenpai, so it doesn't really matter. So whenever I'm looking at cards to side out, it really depends what I'm playing against. So if I'm playing against like Tier or Branded, I'm going to keep these in at two. I might even side in the third. Um, if I'm going against even like Tenpai, I'll keep these in because it's pretty good against Tenpai. So it's like Droll for that matter. Um, these are like kind of mid if they open Field Spell. So it really depends, um, but I'm probably going to do something like this if I'm going against Tenpai, because I want to make sure that I have um, no engine being swapped out, because when you're going first, you want to open as much engine as possible. And then if you want the Rise to Full Height, you can just slide out like a copy of Droll um, and just swap those out. 
I think this is really important though, because you don't really want to cut engine when you're going first at all. Uh, if you're going first, you want to be able to open up as much gas as possible. And we can go done siding here and I kind of show you what I mean too. Um, so I'm still going to open up like one of the drills, which is fine. I have judgment and then I have the spirit gate and the chaos core. I get asked this a lot why I play chaos core. Uh, it's essentially just summoning beast is just looks cooler right <laughs> they both do the same thing i just don't play chaos angels so it doesn't matter which one i play um but this hand's still really crazy it still does a lot um but we can go back to resetting the deck here we'll look at one more hand this hand's insane i opened double judgment here which is even like more insane this plus this just equals anything that you want opening these two together is pretty crazy too because you can just activate this they imperm you you chain this you win the game um, so back to siding though, go reset the deck. Um, if I'm going second, let's say it's like Snake Eye, right? Um, I'm gonna go and do something like this. I'm playing Metaltronus to my side. I think this card's really solid. Um, again, it's not for everything, but like, I do think that it's pretty helpful, especially against Snake, because you can out things like Appaloosa really easy. Um, but overall, you can also play the Disarray if you want to do that. You go ahead and summon that. I play three of this. I might try to play the Disarray and give it a shot. We'll see. Um, but more back to siding. Um, I don't like going over six cards. Uh, if I absolutely have to, I'll go like seven. But like the only time that you should be siding over six for the most part is when you have too many dead cards in your main deck against a matchup, um, which is fine. You can definitely go ahead and side that out. But anything over six, you're risking seeing too much side. Anything under six, you're risking seeing no side. But if you're playing as a matchup where only three cards on your side are really doing anything, but you have a lot of cards in your main deck that do a lot versus the matchup, then it's fine if you only side it in three because you already have a lot of cards that deal with the matchup. Um, so you don't have to be forced to like overside. But here I side in seven um, against Snake because I really want to make sure I see something. And even if I see like two of these, it's fine, right? Like it's perfectly fine. So I'm going to be siding out cards that I don't necessarily want to see in my opening hand because you got to realize seeing three of a card in your main deck is going to be highly likely that you see one of them. If you have two of them in your main deck, then there's going to be a really high chance that you don't brick on the card and you can still see the card. Um, if you have one, it's going to be real awkward because you might not see it at all. And then if you need it like later on, you're going to have to find a way to get to it. Um, so you kind of have to think about that whenever you're going into your uh, next match. So I have seven here. I side out the trap because I definitely don't want to see this going second. Absolutely not. Um, I'm going to set out a Chaos Core and a Beckoning Beast because I still have the three gates and I have the one Beckoning Beast here, uh, which is just more than enough. Um, plus, we're going second, so like a normal summon isn't like the greatest, but it's still a pretty solid activation here because we get a lot of value. Um, the next thing we're going to do is cut Attractus because we don't want to break on this in multiples either. Um, you can consider cutting one of these, but I definitely want to see this in my hand because it's a really good way to bait Interruption too. Um, and then now it depends. So like we're playing against Snake Eyes, so you kind of have to look at your hand trap lineup and see what matters the most. I kind of like this. I kind of like this, especially for the Leary. Um, it's also really awkward. They only have two targets in their graveyard, uh, and then you banish one out when they go to Sequentia, and then they're like forced to use a Sequentia to summon a Lacrimosa that just doesn't do anything. The other thing too that I look at here is going to be, do I need this many starters when I already know that I have a good chance to see another one because I'm going to be drawing a six card? Um, so I do cut one Lotus here and I usually cut one gate, um, because we already have enough starters. Uh, I just want to see as many cards that are going to help me break a board plus engine. So I don't want to break on engine and I want a good mix of the two. Um, we're still one card shy here. So it really depends on what you want to see. Uh, I would cut Terra here though. Um, I don't want to lose to a droll going second as much as possible. Right? So I just want cards that can just activate and go ahead and play. Um, like if I open up these two, there's a high chance that I just activate this first because this plays better in a draw than this does. If I activate this first, then I'm going to be dumping something, popping, and something out of U Bell, and then making a phantom. And then I'll activate this and then try to combo from there because at least I have a stoppage for draw. Um, but into a bigger board, I might just make a phantom anyway. Um, but regardless, you have enough ways to see, um, your engine, but you also want enough ways to see side. So I'm going to swap these out. We're going to hit done siding here. I'm going to draw for turn as well. So on their turn, we're just going to assume that we use both of these to try and stop them and then perm Anna Valor. 
And then here, this is a very unique situation. So like, you have a couple options here. I think when I start this off though, I'm just gonna shuffle both of these back. Now I'm just gonna summon a phantom. We're just gonna check everything out, you know? Summon a phantom. Uh, let's say they have an Appaloosa. I'm gonna go ahead and steal the Appaloosa. They try to like IP, then we'll try to phantom, right? Um, Steal that. We'll use like our Lotus here. Our Lotus to go ahead and combo. Uh, get into our spirit and into our pain. And then from here, this is just like full out combo, right? So things like that, we'll reset the deck again. Um, just kind of see what we can get to. Um, and again, we're seeing a pretty good mix. We have a DD Crow, which isn't gonna be the best. It's gonna be pretty mid, but at least we saw a hand trap here. Our hand's insane. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and draw and see what we get on top of that. Of course, we draw a Valor for turn, it's all right. Um, honestly, like there's worse things, this is fine. Um, we don't have a normal summon yet until we activate this. You also have to consider that you can add a Samsara on this and then be able to normal summon it off your Beckoning Beast as well. So we have the Minecon. Minecon's so important in this format. Minecon and Change of Heart, I swear, they're the best side cards. Hands like this are just absolutely insane. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, when you go to side, you really want to make sure that you really have a good game plan and you always, like, reset your deck. Like, understand when you play against a deck, and you can sit here and be like, all right, I'm playing against 10 Pi, and then you're going to put in, like, whatever you're going to put in, right? And then you're going to hit swap cards, and then take a screenshot. And then on the right here, it says 10 Pi, and then you're like, all right, cool. And you're like, this is my go first against 10 Pi. Take a screenshot. And you're like, now this is go second. And then take a screenshot, right? Um, and that's the best way to really learn siding patterns. Um, I think that's also very important. If you have this button right here, the randomize, you're going to find out that all these are split in half. So there's 40 cards and there's eight possible hands that you can draw. So you can look at the consistency in your deck. Because this is a pile of five, this is a pile of five, all the way down. And you can see how many dead hands you have. And you just look for the recurring theme in every hand to see what cards are breaking your hands out the most. And potentially swap those cards that are making your hands more bricked out. Um, which I think is really important. Uh, I do hope that this helps you though as a little bit more into my siding insight um, I think that siding is the most important thing you play most of your games sided You only play game ones ever so often in a tournament games two and three your side really does matter because you can lose game one and reverse sweep No problem, but you have to have a good side and a good game plan Make sure you're prepared for the best forward acts at least and then just accept that some of the other stuff that you run into is variance and it's not that important but again, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Check out the goal that we have on Twitch right now. If you go ahead and click the Twitch link below, you can go ahead and hit the goal when you see the title of the stream. It'll tell you what to type in. Um, for Nats, I do appreciate each and every one of you. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you all so much.